Good morning, everybody. Greetings from the tank basement. I am Paul, your wicked Uncle Squinty. Music here by DJ Shadow from his album, Introducing. This is called, What Does Your Soul Look Like? Part 4. Well, let's talk a little bit about aromatic tobaccos, but let's talk about coffee. <laughs> I tend to take my coffee black, and the reason for that is because I like to taste the various different species or varietals of coffee that are out there, whether it's Sumatran or Jamaican Blue Mountain or Kona or Folgers. It's just good to taste the coffee as it is, and a lot of pipe smokers feel that way about tobaccos. However, a lot of pipe smokers, particularly beginners, like to try something that has a familiar flavor to it, so they go with an aromatic tobacco. This is a good thing, and it's a bad thing. Right now I'm smoking some of the Lane Double L7, which is Black Cavendish along with a little bit of Burley and Virginia. It is topped with a caramel vanilla topping. Well, what is an arom aromatic tobacco, or Aero, as they're called, A-E-R-O? An aromatic tobacco is any tobacco that has been processed and blended in such a way that the smoker can enjoy a different aroma or taste than what is available from just the cured tobacco leaves. Now, this is done in a variety of ways. You can case the aromatic tobacco with things that will give it a scent. You can dress the tobacco leaves before processing by adding a perfume or other scenting. Or, uh, the most commonly done thing, is you can actually top it with some sort of sweet syrup that gives it a nice flavor. Now, not all aromatics are done this way. Some aromatics simply include some black, brown, or golden Cavendish using the American process of making Cavendish, which involves steaming the tobacco to bring out its natural sugars. Now, I said just a minute ago that beginning pipe smokers start with aromatic tobaccos for better or worse, and that's why I say for better or worse First of all, when you're looking for an aromatic tobacco, you are looking for a tobacco that tastes in your mouth as good as it smells in the air around you or up in your nose. Unfortunately, most aromatics fall very short of this, and the ones that do have a very identifiable flavor are often overly topped with natural and artificial ingredients. Now this means that the pipe can burn hot Instead of getting smoke, you might be getting steam, and the steam will poach your tongue a little bit, or your body may react negatively to the pH of whatever the topping or tobaccos are involved. This results in something called tongue bite. Tongue bite is a very minor burn on your tongue and dryness of mouth which accompanies it. It's not pleasant. And unfortunately, a lot of aromatic pipe tobacco smokers, when they first start out, they will get a cheap pipe like this Missouri Meerschaum Cobb I've got here. And then they will fill it with a cheap over-the-counter uh, aromatic tobacco, such as uh, Paladin Black Cherry or uh, Borkum Riff Cherry Cordial or something like that. They will try to smoke it too fast in order to get the flavors out of it, and they will end up with pipe gurgle, lots of moisture in the bowl, and tongue bite. So what do we want from an aromatic tobacco other than that it tastes as good as it smells? Well, first of all, we want it to burn very clean, and we want to answer the phone. Hello? Hello? Good. So I had a power blackout, which I didn't, but it's been restored. That's nice. Where was I? Okay, you want you want an aromatic tobacco to taste as good as it smells in the pouch, in the pipe. You want it to burn very cleanly so that it doesn't leave a bunch of goop and nasty dottle in the bottom of your bowl. And you would like it to not have so much propylene glycol on it. 
Now see, my music just ran out, and I wasn't even done with this little talk yet. Well, we'll just leave it quiet there for just a minute. But let's talk about what I like to call the tobacco shuffle. Now, a lot of tobacco stores will do this, brick and mortars. They will buy huge tubs of the various Lane bulk tobaccos, the Sutliff bulk tobaccos, the Cornell and Deal bulk tobaccos, and particularly with the aromatics, they'll give it some kind of fancy name. For example, RLP6 from Lane Limited, the bulk version, is often sold in the tinderbox stores, I believe it's called Chartwell uh, there. And But, you know, if you go into a tobacco store, you can just go up to the tobacconist and say, hey, which one of these is your 1Q? And they will help you out, of course. That's part of the tobacco shuffle. But the other part of the tobacco shuffle is, for instance, using Lane Limited as an example, many of the Captain Black varieties, which are also made by name, exist in the bulk generic form. I call it generic, but they actually do have names. This is the double L7, LL7 from Lane, which is a mixture of Black Cavendish and a little bit of Burley and a little bit of Virginia topped, as I said, with a caramel vanilla casing. This is sold in your drugstore as Captain Black Copper. Problem is, the Captain Black version has a lot more propylene glycol, humectant, to keep it fresh and moist on the shelf. They also add a little bit more of this topping. The result is Captain Black will tend to bite you and burn hot in your bowl, whereas the generic version, the LL7, will not. Talking about that tobacco shuffle with Lane and Captain Black, if you've ever smoked Captain Black Royal, you've already smoked Lane 1Q, but not as good. And if you've already smoked Captain Black White Label, You've already smoked Lane's RLP6. Again, not as good. The LL7 is the copper. The BCA Black Cavendish is the Captain Black Black label. And as far as their red label goes, I believe that's MV1000, but it could be any one of Lane's other three cherry cordial type tobaccos. So... And the hell of it is, is if you go to a brick and mortar even, or especially online where you can buy these by the lane that na the name that Lane gave them, you're going to save a whole bunch of money. It, I have to laugh because I was reading reviews on tobacco reviews about these various aromatics, and one reviewer said, I don't care what you say, I really like Captain Black better. And I don't care that it's loaded with propylene glycol and it smokes hot and it bubbles in my pipe because I can go down to my gas station and I can get an ounce and a half pouch for $15. Aww. And you know what I say to them? I say, that's good, buddy. I'm sorry about the extra chromosome, but you're my friend. Of course, you can go the other way with this, too. You could get the pipe snob gene. Oh, look, the newbie is smoking some aromatic, probably one of those lane concoctions and a cob or something. Whereas I smoke in my $7,000 artisan-built straight grain briar with the Vibrolux stem, and I only smoke penzance. But if I was going to smoke one of those aromatics, those beginner, those pipe tobacco with training wheels, I would only smoke Hobbit's weed. It was, after all, used in the filming of The Hobbit and the, the Tolkien movies, you know. So it must be absolutely delicious, and nobody carries it, so you actually have to buy it from Tewksbury. But it's the only aromatic worth smoking bullshit. I'm sorry. Put your snobbery in your back pocket. I'm really happy for you. I really am. If you can go out and drop seven grand on a pipe and then smoke $35 uh, an ounce tobacco, go for it, man. Have fun. But me, I like my cob, and once in a while, I do like an aromatic.
And this LL7 is particularly delicious with its chocolate marshmallow flavor that you get from the smoke. I don't really taste a lot of caramel or vanilla. I'm getting chocolate marshmallow, kind of like a s'mores taste when I start out. It's great with coffee. So that's it. You're going to shop for an Arrow. Get it as lightly cased as possible. You want one that will burn cleanly down to the bottom of the bowl and not leave a lot of goop, which you will have to wipe out with a paper towel if you've got that there. Pipe cleaner won't do it. Uh, you want one that tastes as good as it smells, or at least gets close, while not having too much casing and too much topping. Lane does a brilliant job with their aromatics. They really don't bite unless you're an idiot when you smoke. But a lot of us, when we start out, we're idiots. We try to smoke it too fast. We suck on it too hard to get it lit. We don't pack it right. And you might have a bad experience with your first aromatic. Don't make let that make you give up on them they can be really pleasant one advantage of the aromatics is they tend to be really low nicotine compared to other pipe blends now i am a nicotine craving fool but when i get up first thing in the morning i really don't want or need a lot of nicotine so my first pipe full with my first cup of coffee will often be a tobacco that's lower in nicotine and aromatics are great for that so, if you have any questions or would like me to suggest some good aromatics that can be bought cheaply in bulk, be sure and write to me. That's Uncle Squinty, no spaces, Uncle Squinty at gmail.com. I will get right back to you with what I hope is an informed and intelligent, intelligent answer. Toy boat, toy boat. Can't talk this morning. I need more coffee. Thanks for watching.